we're going to be going into the current conditions, breaking down the tropical cyclone that looks to impact Florida and potentially the East Coast. And let's just get straight into things. And first things first, we can see that there is a little bit of activity up here in the Northwest. We see some for the Southern Rockies here. This is coming to an end. And then we have severe weather really stretching throughout these regions. So we're going to be seeing thunderstorm activity and severe weather uh, throughout all of those spots. We do have some showery activity up here, and for the most part, anywhere in the southeast throughout the day today does have a chance at seeing thunderstorms, and even down here for Texas and Louisiana, we can see in the deep south. So pretty much everywhere has a chance of uh, some pretty interesting weather there in the eastern half of the nation. Let's just go ahead and zoom into some different spots here. First things first, we see for the northwest, uh, this showery activity just kind of moving across the region. Uh, I do expect that some of these showers will end up moving on shore there to especially uh, Washington, but somewhat of Northern Oregon probably as well. We usually see those areas get about the same weather. Uh, we do see that these showers are in the form of rainfall. Again, we're moving very close to the summertime. Actually, you know what? Today is the first meteorological day of summer because we can see that it is June 1st. I didn't realize it's June yet, but it's June. That's what happens when you wake up fairly early like me. Um, we can see for the Southern Rockies that we do see some showery activity, even some moderate showers in there with those yellows popping up. Some snowfall here for the Southern Rockies. This looks to come to an end though. Uh, and really after this is all said and done, I don't know how much more snowfall we're going to see at all this season. Uh, we can see that there is this thunderstorm activity down to the south here throughout Oklahoma and Texas as well as a bit of Kansas there. Um, some of these look pretty potent there in the Texas Panhandle near Amarillo. That's going to be heading eastward towards Oklahoma City, as you can see. So later this morning into the early afternoon, we might be watching for some of that activity there near Oklahoma City. We see for the Ohio Valley and some of the plains here, we do see this thunderstorm activity up here. This will also turn severe a little bit later on. And then some of this thunderstorm activity extends all the way up into Canada there and even heads down through into uh, Michigan as well, and some showery activity and potentially thunderstorms here for the New England regions of the United States as well as some of the Northeast here, uh, just like this moving across. Uh, we're going to see more of this actually heading into these regions as this pocket here that's up in Canada moves down into New York and potentially New England. Again, down here in the south, we can see some isolated thunderstorms take place throughout all of these regions throughout the day today. Uh, there is a general thunderstorm risk up for those reasons, and we can see that end up happening. Uh, for Florida, we are seeing just these typical Florida thunderstorms moving through. Keep that in mind. So we're going to be watching closely for that. Uh, and then for Texas down here in Louisiana, we see just these isolated thunderstorms and showers. Uh, probably thunderstorms, very small thunderstorms moving off the Gulf of Mexico. Speaking of the Gulf of Mexico, we do have to talk about that tropical system in a little while, so stay tuned for that. You can always use the slider bar down below uh, where you can skip in the video, and it will give you the different categories where you can skip to each part, just depending on what you're watching for. Uh, so I like that feature a lot so that you guys don't have to watch something you don't want to watch. You just watch the part that you came to watch. So what we're going to do here is we're going to move on, and we're going to talk about some model guidance, the current conditions, really the upcoming conditions, even that upcoming tropical cyclone. Uh, and even some severe weather as well towards the end. Now let's just go ahead and move through with some of this modeled guidance. As we can see, a lot of this precipitation this evening moves up just like this into these regions. Uh, Texas through the rest of the plains up northeastward towards the Ohio Valley and even into the northeast itself. Uh, we're going to have some thunderstorms developing throughout the day today. Again, we can expect some isolated thunderstorms to take place this afternoon and evening for those spots as well. Uh, and by the time we reach tomorrow into, well, let's see, Thursday, we're looking like this. Uh, so some potential thunderstorms in here, uh, even some showery activity up in the northwest with a smaller low pressure system. You can see the tropical activity down here, by the way. Uh, and by the time we reach Friday afternoon, which will be about the third, we see this tropical activity has moved in between Florida and the Yucatan Peninsula. We see some thunderstorms down here for the deeper south as well. Uh, we even see some of this thunderstorm activities moving, thunderstorm and showery activity moving up into the northwest and through uh, into some of the northern plains. By the time we reach the 4th, we could see around the 4th is when this one would be impacting uh, Florida, the afternoon of Saturday the 4th. Um, so potential flooding rainfall, uh, potential windiness, etc. And then as this moves offshore of the east coast, this thing really drops in pressure. We see a 994 millibar low pressure center now, very close to the east coast. 
990 by this point, and then a 987 here. It's pretty far offshore, but I would not be shocked to see this one trend west. A lot of these areas, and maybe even further northward, if we get the jet stream set up right, uh, could feel some rainfall and some pretty mild windiness from this one, but it would be an interesting scenario for sure. Um, and this is just going to be something we need to track. Also, by this point on Monday, June 6th, we see a lot of this thunderstorm activity moving up into these spots. Tuesday, June 7th, we see that it kind of horseshoes around just like this. So we see a lot of these areas seeing some of that activity. Um, let's move towards later on on Wednesday the 8th. We see pretty much this entire corridor here seeing some activity. Let's see the 9th. We see kind of the east in general there. Just like that, we see another low moving on toward the northwest, by the way, by, by the uh, 9th. By the 10th, we have some of this activity continuing here, a low up here, and another low moving on toward there. So we have three separate areas of activity. And that's about the end of the model run. We see no snowfall, no blue. So this is going to be really receding the snowfall over the next 10 days. As we approach the middle point of June, snow becomes basically a thing of the past. Speaking of snow and precipitation, let's just break down the total precipitation through the next 10 days. And in the whites, we're expecting no precipitation over the next 10 days. Grays are going to be about a tenth of an inch or less. Greens will be a tenth of an inch to half an inch. Blues will be half an inch to an inch. Yellows will be an inch to two inches. Reds will be two to five inches. And then your browns are going to be five to ten inches of rainfall. And we see a lot of that going on with this tropical activity down there in Florida. So for these spots here, we expect potentially five to ten inches of rainfall with that tropical disturbance. Now, for total snowfall here, look at how minimal this is over the next 10 days, guys. If you're anywhere in the grays, you're expecting a dusting, if anything. If you're anywhere in the blues, you're expecting 2 to 6 inches of snowfall, potentially, and that's only for mountaintops here. Then if you're anywhere in the purples, you're expecting 6 to 10, and I do see some of that there for Colorado. But outside of that, we don't get any higher on the scale here unless you go up into Canada, where the pinks are 10 to 20 inches, and then your pastels are going to be 20 inches plus up there. But we have really receded down on this upcoming snowfall. Uh, and I expect to stop using this map in our daily videos sometime within the next 10 days. Uh, and then we'll, set, we'll start again probably in September or October. Or probably September because we'll probably start the second I start seeing some snowfall pop up. Because that's always an exciting time of year as well. All right. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to move on. And we're going to take a look at the upcoming temperature pattern. All right. Now here we are taking a look at the current temperature pattern. We have warmer air here in the eastern United States surging in just like this. We see a lot of cold air coming in behind and this has a lot to do with that storminess up there for these spots in here kind of in between the two air masses. As we continue things on towards this afternoon we're going to see this is going to really push down where the, the main conflict of these air masses is happening in here. Also some of it starting up here in the northeast as well. We're especially going to see that on Thursday as we approach this date. We see that the activity is mostly in these spots. A lot of warm air still on the eastern seaboard. Um, and they're going to be kind of shielded from these thunderstorms for the most part tomorrow is the expectation. We also have some warm air starting up here for the west, which is going to push that cold air even further eastward. And by the time we reach Friday, it's really just centered over this spot, I would say. But it isn't too bad. We do have a little bit of a southeast ridge continuing. Um... Still some warmer air in here, but some colder air is starting to mix its way in. Let's look at Saturday, June 4th. Mostly warmer air kind of returning, actually, for the eastern United States, and a lot of colder air working its way into the west. So I bet what we're going to see is a stronger ridge build into the east after this point. For Sunday, it looks like that is the, kind of what's happening here. We see the warm air surging in just like this uh, as cold air is kind of forcing its way down into these regions here. That causes a lot of the warmth to head eastward usually uh, when we see this occur like this. So Monday, that's going to be the 6th. We see this continuing just like that. Tuesday the 7th. Now we have some cold air working its way in. So I guess it never really makes it up to the northern spots, which is pretty interesting. Um, but still, we saw a bit of a warm up there for the southeastern United States. In this case, it's really a, a lot of warmth down here and a lot of cold up here. Usually it's west and east, but in this case it's north and south. Usually this doesn't last too long, though, because it is kind of a balanced thing. And as you can see, a lot of the warmth does head towards the west, and we see our next trough heading towards the eastern United States here by the 8th. By the 9th, we see full-fledged ridge in the west, trough in the east here with a bit of a southeast ridge still. So that southeast ridge has really been keeping the southeast warmer 
on what we've seen here. Friday the 10th, as we can see, again, warm in the west, cold in the east here, just like that. And that's about the end of the model run. So that is what we're taking a look at. A bit of back and forth, but mostly I would say we, are, we actually see a lot of colder in the east and more warmth in the west over the next 10 days. Uh, so that seems to be the trend at this point. Now, let's take a look at some of that tropical activity. Here is our vorticity. I just want to show you what the European model is showing. This shows us large-scale rotation in the atmosphere, so we're seeing a lot of this type of activity here, which is our tropical cyclone. This is by kind of early on the 3rd. This is the 3rd afternoon. That's going to be Friday. And as we approach the early morning hours of Saturday, this is going to be about, you know, 8 a.m. or so, we see this is really over Florida by this point, somewhere over the middle of Florida. We're going to see this really move up the coast here in a sec, and it's, it's going to actually intensify quite a bit. So by uh, really early on Sunday, June 5th, it's going to be about 2 a.m., we see this thing really get going here offshore of the southeast coast, and especially by 2 p.m. there on Sunday, we see a lot of those pinks indicating stronger areas of rotation. It's really important to note that with any sort of tick to the west, we could start to see major impacts for these coastlines there, so keep that in mind. Here's the GFS's take on it. And we see it does hit Florida now, the southern Florida. So this seems to be bending towards what the European model is showing. So it's a lot closer. But it just does not pull it up the coast there. You're going to see that it actually suppresses it here and takes it just directly eastward there, uh, not impacting the eastern seaboard. So that's pretty interesting there as well. Now let's take a look at the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook real quick. So here it is. We've moved up to an 80% chance of tropical development over the next five days here in between the Yucatan Peninsula and Florida there. Um, so this is more likely than not by actually a lot going to happen. Um, so we can see that that is an 80% chance over the next five days. Uh, and if I scroll over this real quickly, we can see that we actually have a 50% chance over the next two days. So odds are increasing and it's getting much sooner when we're going to end up seeing this really happen. All right, now let's go ahead and move on and talk about the Storm Prediction Center real quickly because we have a bit of severe weather to talk about. Now here is our day one categorical outlook and we have three general thunderstorm risks. One there for the Northwest, another one there for the Northern Rockies, and then one there for all of basically the Eastern United States outside of a few different areas. Again, I mentioned thunderstorms seem to be a big possibility for pretty much everywhere in the Eastern United States. Uh, we have a marginal risk there indicated by the darker green from New Mexico and Texas all the way up through the Northeast. Um, and that's where we expect isolated severe weather to take place. And then we have two yellow areas there, which is our two slight risk regions, and that's where we expect scattered severe weather to take place within those two areas today on Wednesday, June 1st. For day two, which is going to be Thursday, June 2nd, we can see three general thunderstorm risks again, one there for the northwest, one there for the upper Midwest, and then one there for the south central and southeastern United States, and that's again where we expect general thunderstorms, but anything is possible, so heed every watch, warning, and advisory. We have two marginal risk areas, one there for Texas and New Mexico, and then one there from eastern Texas all the way up through the mid-Atlantic. And again, that's where we expect isolated severe weather. And then our slight, slight risk area there for the mid-Atlantic in the yellow is where we expect scattered severe weather to take place. For day three, which is going to be Friday, June 3rd, we have one general thunderstorm risk where, again, we expect general thunderstorms, but anything is possible. So again, heed every watch, warning, aid advisory. We also have our two marginal risk areas, one there for the Rockies and the Plains, and then one there for the southeast, and this is again where we expect isolated severe weather to take place. And then the one yellow area there for Oklahoma, Texas, and New Mexico is where we expect scattered severe weather to take place. It's called our slight risk region. Anyway, for today's confidence tab, I'm moving up to a 5 out of 6, mostly because I'm just sick of it being a 4 out of 6. And I, quite frankly, I feel a lot more confident in our tropical system than I did uh, just a couple of days ago or even just yesterday because the GFS is really bending towards it. I feel like the European is on to something. Um, and overall confidence has increased. For today's patron, I let it today. I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Bill Crates, James Wade, Dovin Nagel, Lerla Pan, Mandy Birchfield, Patrick Strickland, Dave Scott, and Donna Carnes as well. I'd also like to thank our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Colossa, Catbite, Charles Dennett, Bill Dallas, Garys, and John Colisi also. I'd also like to thank our channel members, Catbite, Stephen Fan, and Jeremy Cox as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.